Hey everybody, happy Monday. Welcome to another edition of The Daily here with my good friend Simon Borg. I'm Nick Fershon. If you've been following the U.S. national team through the CONCACAF hexagonal, you know all about that 3-1 loss to Costa Rica on Friday night. You can catch complete coverage on MLSsoccer.com. Before we speak to Andrew Wiebe, who's on the ground in Columbus, I want to get your thoughts on this result because this not only snapped a big 12-game winning streak for the U.S. national team, but it put their backs up against the wall a little bit going in this game against Mexico. What did you think? I thought Jurgen Klinsmann got the lineup wrong to start the game. For me, Landon Donovan and Clint Dempsey do not go together up top. Then at right back, I would have gone with Michael Parkhurst. Instead, Klinsman went with Michael Orozco Fiscal, and he was set up for failure. Now, the U.S. have suspensions to deal with going into the Mexico game. For more on those, our own Andrew Wiebe filed this report from Columbus. Andrew Wiebe here from Columbus Crew Stadium. As you can see behind me, the U.S. national team is going through their paces for the first time since arriving in Ohio. On the plane with them was Michael Bradley. He was diagnosed with a grade two ankle sprain, which is not as bad as initially expected, although he will not be available for this match, according to Jurgen Klinsmann. Four new players in, four players out. John Brooks out, reunited with his club team in Germany. Jeff Cameron and Matt Beasler back with their club teams as well after yellow cards against Costa Rica. As far as Beasler's replacement, it appears Clarence Goodson will slot right in next to Omar Gonzalez. Goodson saying he doesn't expect any problems next to Gonzalez. Both of those players familiar with each other. Either way, Mexico will pose a stiff test, although people are saying that they could be a wounded animal in this match after the firing of Chepo de la Torre. Tim Howard, he does not agree. He said the U.S. remains fearful of the threat they pose on Tuesday night. <laughs> You know, Tuesday night they're going to be a heck of a team to play against. You know, they're not going to be this uh, wounded uh, animal that everyone thinks they are. They're, they're a heck of a team. They're top, top players. They're going to cause us uh, a hell of a lot of problems. And uh, I think we're, we're, we're capable of handling it and we're capable of winning, but it's not going to be easy, no matter what people say they're going through. They're always good, and they're, they're, you, you got to always respect them, and I think you got to, they're going to get out of it. So they're down now, and so hopefully we can keep them there. So there you go, the latest news from Columbus. Again, that game is Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's on ESPN in English and Unimas in Spanish. Catch complete coverage on MLSsoccer.com. Switching our focus to MLS, where the Eastern Conference race is really heating up. Three teams have separated themselves, for now anyway, from the pack, the Montreal Impact, Sporting Kansas City, and the New York Red Bulls. All three teams had big wins over the weekend. Assignment, I'll give this one to you. Who had the most impressive win and who's going to pull ahead down the stretch? Well, how can you not be impressed by the New York Red Bulls? They had never won in Houston during the regular season, and they go to BBV at Compass Stadium, where the Dynamo had only lost once previously in their history, and they go in and win 4-1. That was an impressive victory. And I think what it showcased is the quality they have up top when all everyone is clicking. So you had Thierry Henry, Bradley Wright Phillips, Johnny Steele, and Lloyd Sam, all those guys scoring goals and all really showing their technical quality look the Dynamo they were missing players uh, Dominic Kinnear shuffled the lineup shuffled the formation it just didn't work out so a, a bad day a day off there for the Houston Dynamo but still nonetheless we're used to the Red Bulls going into that kind of heat yeah. uh, and just you know wilting they didn't dare. They won 4-1. to That was impressive. A nice win for them. A nice win for Kansas City over the Columbus crew without some of their star players. And then the Montreal Impact with a win over the Revs. They're the ones with two games in hand. You can find the latest on the Eastern Conference standings on MLSsoccer.com. Switching our focus out west where two teams stayed alive in the playoff race. FC Dallas and the San Jose Earthquakes have been on the outside looking in for these last few weeks. But big wins. The Quakes over the Union and FC Dallas over Vancouver. Which team is going to actually make a run here down the stretch and make the postseason? I think Dallas has the best shot, not only because they're already ahead of San Jose, but also they have game breakers on their team. We saw it now with Mauro Diaz. We hadn't seen him really make an impact until that golazo that won it for them against Vancouver. And then Jair Benitez put the icing on the cake with one of the goals of the year uh, there from, half, from the halfway line. With San Jose, they need everything to go right. And let's be honest, Philadelphia really took it to them, especially when San Jose went a man down. Uh, so San Jose, I think, need too much to go their way. Dallas, they have enough talent to, to, to pick up some big results down the line here. Some of those teams ahead of those guys, the Colorado Rapids, Seattle Sounders, and Portland Timbers, all posting a win over the weekend, as did Chivas USA. They knocked off D.C. United on Sunday night. D.C. United becomes the first team eliminated from playoff contention in 2013. That's something I don't think 
we ever thought we would see. Make sure you log on to MLSsoccer.com slash standings and stay tuned to the site on Monday for complete coverage of the U.S. national team and Extra Time Radio. The podcast will come out this afternoon on iTunes, Buzzsprout, and Stitcher Radio. Does it for us. See you back again tomorrow. 